my training is, uh, my background is in theatre design. Uh, originally I studied art and textiles, GCSEs, and then went on to do textiles A-levels, um, and then theatre design, studied in London at St Martin's Art College um, in theatre design and specialised in costume. Um, but I didn't complete my degree in London and ended up going to, um, actually went to Trinidad, uh, left after maybe one year um, and I went to Trinidad to work on the carnival um, my aunt was working for the designer Peter Minchel um, as, her, as his graphic designer and she also was a performer in his, in some, in his pieces, in his, in his carnival bands and so I had the opportunity to go, they were working on the um, Atlanta, I think it was, uh, opening ceremony costumes and because I had done textiles, I had a background in batik, so the opportunity came up to go to do the work for um, Minchel, and I, I jumped at the chance. So I left college, yeah, university, and went to Trinidad in 96, I think it was. Uh, and it was incredible. It was a really incredible experience. The, the mass camp, which is the camp that they make, or the masquerade camp where they make all the costumes, um, he had an aeroplane hangar, like in the UK, you know, our mass camps are quite small, we're always a bit tight of space, but there they had an old aeroplane hangar in um, Shagaramas, uh, and I was there uh, for a couple of years, maybe a year, I think it was, um, working um, predominantly with, on these batik, in this, for this batik um, section. Um, so that was really, for me, that was just, a, it was life changing. I think that experience to be there, to be in Trinidad, to to see because you know I was the newcomer and, and you know coming in from the UK. So really, I was just observing. I just got my head down and did my job, which was to, to do these batik circles, and just really observed the the characters, the dynamics, the, the collaborations. It, it was magic. It was like it was like a magic time. I still think for me that was creatively probably the most magic experience at that age I could have ever had, I think, imagined. So we did the, the, we worked on that. And then um, we went, I went and we were in Song of the Earth. It was my first real, apart from, I've been to Notting Hill and I've been to, to carnivals in the UK, but Song of the Earth, to be in, to experience that. And it was the first time I ever saw David Rudder and he was performing high mass um, on a truck on the back of the truck with Charlie's Roots and then just the, the feeling of release, the creativity, everybody and everybody was at that point, everyone's just one. Observing that, that period of time in Trinidad, observing how you put those different cultures together, the, the influences that he was drawing on, you know, he was taking elements where you would have the, the stilt walkers, the Mokojumbi influences, from Africa, but then he would have Tassa drummers, which had the influence from India. And, you know, he would reference stick fight. He would reference um, co very contemporary culture, ballet. He, it, it was it was this complete melting pot of cultures. And for me, that really spoke to me because for my family, you know, I have we have Indian, we have African, we have uh, Sri Lankan, we have Amerindian. Um, English, German, all oh, Scottish, Jamaican. It's a real so to to be to find something where all of those things made sense and to see it visually out played out like that was it was um, yeah it was life changing I would say. And now in my work, I'm, that's the thing that I'm trying to to look at is where where some place that all of those things make sense um, and. So a lot of my work now, I would say it's very much like, I kind of like to look at call and response in a way and how your history informs your present. So, you know, what we carry with us historically and culturally, and then what we carry with us in the contemporary world. So, you know, those things change we, when we become mothers, when we become adults, when we have to, when we work, um, when we become wives, when we become, you know, grown-ups as such, and how those things reference what, you know, what, how, who and how we are now, and, and how, 
how we can express that. And for me, as a visual person, you know, I can read it, I can hear it, I can speak speak it, but the best thing by miles is to make it or show it or draw it, sketch it, something, because there's not, I find this more difficult than this. You know, I can sit and do this all day long. Um, and this is easy, you know, I find this easy, but this, I find more difficult to do this part. So then I had this incredible 20 year um, relationship with RJC and it was just brilliant. In every way, it was just brilliant. And I had the ability in Leeds, once I became a mum, I didn't have that ability to be able to go and travel. I did go to Trinidad every year, but not for the long periods of time. I couldn't do the carnival because of the hours and, you know, motherhood and, and you know, theatre, carnival, film. It doesn't, the two things don't, don't go very well together because of the hours. So the carnival and, and having, um, doing the schools workshop, I had a company called Mango. And for... 20, nearly 20 years we worked all in schools all over the UK when in and we did like carnival work we used to make our own fabrics uh, we would do batik we would do head headdress making backpack making um, everything really everything and then sometimes I would bring in a dancer and sometimes we would have drummers and sometimes and again we would all you know that that reference from from being in the mass camp of the crossover, we would do a project where we would go and do carnival costumes, but we'd bring in a doll drummer. And it was just really trying to find that place where all of those circles overlap um, visually, music, culturally, and being able to do that um, with the young people. I think it's important because I think identity is a big thing in the UK. I mean, in, you know, in Trinidad, people just kind of say, oh, you know, you're this mix or this mix because everybody you know it's, it's a mixed place it's really it's not uncommon to have four or five different mix but in the UK you know people are more like but what so you're this or you're this or you know are you black are you Indian are you I mean what what's the mix and it's so I think it's important to have those conversations in the UK as well because people put so much emphasis on it um, and for people to be able to connect, to say, you know, no, it's not, my roots aren't just African or my roots aren't just Indian or my roots aren't just European. You know, my roots are 10% this and 15% that, 20% that, and, you know, and to be proud of all of those things, you know, and I think it's art and, and creativity is a great place to do that because it's neutral. You know, if you write if you make an essay about something someone says no but that's not correct and this is not correct and this is you know historically this is you know art subjective you can say whatever you want to say you know you can be you can reference whichever part of you makes sense for you at that time so some of my you know we've done carnival bands which were really heavily indian influenced all the fabrics were sari based you know we, we used prints we used a lot of the kind of historical kind of indian influence um, really we tried very much to tailor it to who the audience was and, and what would give the kids sort of, you know, reference point. Um, and it was great. Mango was really great. It was uh, perfect with the kids. It was perfect in Leeds because Leeds has this incredible carnival heritage, this incredible historical carnival. Um, RJC, the relationship with RJC was really special because they have that with their dance. They they reference, you know, reggae, jazz, contemporary. It's, it's their work. It's so, it's it has it has its roots in history, but it has this incredible kind of really beautiful contemporary way that they put their performances together. And you see, you know, you go to see an RJC thing, and you can see little all the little bits of influence and. Um, and it just, the, the relationship together of me doing the kind of visuals, the costumes and the dance, it was great. It was really great. And they gave me so much creative freedom. They would just say, you know, let's come up with a theme. We would have meat. We'd come up with a theme and we would just go with it. The, the choreography would, you know, whether it was Edward or Naps or, or you know, Nalanthi, they would just take it to a different level. And then, you know, I would have that freedom to do the costumes. And because my training was in theatre design, and costume for uh, one of the sections was costume for dance you know it was really a challenge because making costumes for dancers is not easy because 
it's not something which is going to go in the bin at the end of the day. You know, they're going to wear it. We, we were really conscious about being, about sustainability. So from right, right, right from the conception, it wasn't just, oh, you know, let's do something that looks nice for two days and then we'll put it in the skip. It was kind of, you know, this is going to be worn. It might have to be changed. We might have to change the, the restitch certain things. It's going to be performed on the street. It's going to be performed in the summer. It might be performed in... Uh, Christmas shows, it might be performed in all these different places. These things have to be well made, they have to be um, beautiful, beautifully made, not just kind of, you know, stick it and put it on the road. But I just find it really exciting and it made that relationship with RJC even more special because that's how they feel, that's how RJC approached it as well, is like, well, let's just, come on then, you know, let's try it, let's try it. and. If it works, it works, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And and to be able to do that with young people and adults, and we travelled, we went to Rotterdam, um, we've been and travelled to different carnivals, and I just I think it was just amazing. I think that experience with them was amazing, and I think we made some incredible bands um, that had great themes for them. Uh, and it really kind of saved me, I think, like in that 20 years of motherhood, which is very, by its nature, it's very routine. It's the school room, it's the PE kits, it's, you know, homework, it's what everybody needs. And then to have that release for maybe four months of the year of making the costumes, the themes, the meetings, and then it coming together in August to, to go on the road and that joy, I mean, you know, anybody who's ever seen RJC perform, it's like electric, you can't bottle that. It's it's so powerful, the energy, the, the honesty, the, the power of the young people, I don't know how they do that, but I really feel blessed that I was able to be a little part of that with, with put the costumes. So this is, at the moment, I'm I'm kind of have gone more into like visual arts. Uh, in 2019, I was lucky enough to get awarded a develop it was a project grant through the Arts Council England, and that was really to just look more at my own practice, um, not necessarily in the context of costume or um, workshops or uh, community arts, but just more, you know me finding a way to be able to express myself, a bit of art therapy, really. Um, and I was really lucky that I got awarded the grant. And the project was called Carnival to Canvas, and it was translating some of those 3D skills into 2D. Um, and also to be able to, I when I sort of look back over sort of sketchbooks, um, it was really noticeable that Within the sketchbooks that we that I'd done, I always do sketchbooks for every project we ever did. I mean, generally nobody sees them, but that because that's my personal bit of it. And then we do the workshops and the mood boards with the young people. But the sketchbook part, just you know, they're done and then they go in a drawer and then they're done and they go in a drawer. So this is just a to show the sort of sketchbook style. So you know, I'd work not necessarily chronologically, just. Random things, you know, things that don't necessarily go together, but, you know, work on one page one day and another page another day. And then, kind of, you know, it just creates this kind of almost like a storyboard, I suppose, where you, it's just things that come to you, visuals, shapes, textures. And when I was going through them, I was thinking, but a lot of this stuff is kind of here, but it's, there's no, it doesn't go anywhere because those themes you know, when you're working with young people, you, there's only, you can't kind of go and say, you know, today, kids, we're going to make a, a band about grief. You know, it, it, you can't do that with, with, I mean, I suppose you could, but we didn't, you know, we didn't, we didn't um, do those kind of themes and, and, you know, that juxtaposition, I suppose, of looking at what was happening in my personal life and then what was happening in my professional life. So my professional life was about carnival, it was about joy, it was about expression, it was about release, it was about creating a kind of escapism from something else. And then looking through those sketchbooks, it struck me that, you know, you would turn a page and it was quite dark. Elements of it would be 
because it was related more to you know things that my my relationship breakdown and being a single mom and you know the, the stresses and strains of life you know childhood trauma and, and those things were kind of there in in some dusty sh drawer somewhere so yeah so i got that um uh, two months after i was ordered that covid struck we went into lockdown and actually in many ways it was a, a good thing no, not not in a global sense, but in the sense of like headspace and every, the world just everything just stopped. Everything just stopped. There was just this kind of you know pause on life, and and um, you know we kind of had two options. I, you know, I have my own business, and you know it was it was so stressful not to know whether we would survive, whether we would survive, what we would do for money. Um, as was the whole world, everybody, you know, especially in, you know, in the arts and everything. It's just, it was really, really hard mentally. And so I think it was kind of like finding something to stay sane, essentially, you know, and, and luckily i was so lucky that this project had kind of coincided that that to be able to use it i suppose as a vehicle um and obviously when i wrote the arts council application it had nothing to do with it. I've never even heard of covid19 so it wasn't it gave it a different slightly different direction because obviously every day the news the the, the politics the fear the anxiety that it was somewhere for it to go because otherwise it's just here and it's not going anywhere it's got nowhere to go it was a, it took on this life of its own really the project took on a life of its own and the first piece that i did um really which when i did it it was just frustration i think it was just come from a place of frustration and feeling the of, a, of injustice and i the first piece i did was we drowning street it was just everywhere. It was just the world. It was the only thing that anybody was talking about. And it was obviously, it was a lot of fear, it was a lot of anxiety. Um, and there was also a lot of political corruption and, and a lot of um, mixed messaging and, you know, cronyism. And even from the early days, that was very, very, very apparent. So we drown in street. And because it was a difficult topic to really talk to, I mean, we were in lockdown also, um, I just thought, now I really need to get this off my chest. So something like this would be like the starting point of We Drowning Street, where you can see it's got like the red, the cow head, uh, which I think I think this is actually originally I think it was a it was a Minshall band, um, and you know how that's then come forward into We Drowning Street, um, making it contemporary. So We Drowning Street was a huge piece. Uh, three meters by by three and a half by two two and a half meters um and it referenced uh really it was kind of a bit of a take on the blue devils it was sort of that idea of the blue suits and the tories and that kind of revelry and bacchanal and it was almost like revelry in 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 misery there was a, you know feeling like you know wild Everybody else is suffering and scared. There's people making a hell of a lot of money and kind of almost looking at it as an opportunistic situation where, you know, the rich get rich and some people have got very rich. Um, and so We Drowning Street is, it has, you know, the Downing, uh, the, the Downing Street door in the centre. It's kind of like right in the centre of the, of the piece. And then um, the wreaths on the... The railings, you know, it has it has the sort of wreaths and the honouring of of people who have passed, and then almost like a kind of bacchanal, juve uh, scene of of people in suits. Um, I mean, you know, you could probably say who's who in the in the in the characters, but it's it was more of just a reference to the idea that that the elites. It was like you know they're burning money. They're, 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 they, you know, a lot of the, the collars are made of of banknotes. Uh, one of the, the the 
the demonic figures is burning um, burning money um, holding the money aloft and it's just as sort of it's supposed to be like a scene that, that's got that real Machiavellian uh, feeling to it um, so yeah when we drowned in the street was it was really like reconnecting with that on a really big scale um, and I love it I really that piece is really special after drowning street um, was the first one I decided the second one to really go into the more originally the idea was that it was going to be more like a kind of you know therapeutic process um, and more personal so um, d uh, detail which is the kind of nickname for the, the next piece uh, that I worked on was more really to do with childhood trauma and um, that was a hard one you know, it's, it's yeah. That sometimes it's a it's it's therapy tends to be more talking about uh, talking generally. Um, so to put it in something physical that's not ethereal, you speak and it goes away. But if you create something, whether it's written or whether it's visual, it's there. It stays. It's there for for. For life whether anybody sees it or not it's there for life so yeah that was interesting it was different and um, but it was really cathartic really interesting a really good way of um speaking about that and that was really um it was, it was the piece interestingly enough the piece really took reference from midnight robber originally the piece really had kind of its its heart the first thing that i drew really was more a midnight robber um and it was kind of based on the on uh, the barons which was i just come i'd been uh in trinidad and with the incredible band moco smoco uh and they had these the beautiful the costume designer alan vaughan is a genius and He'd made these beautiful barons and this kind of like dark beauty and, and it sort of loosely was based on, on, on that. The third one was, was a series of, um, I don't, almost like kind of mermaid-esque uh, pieces. They had a sort of more of a sort of sea, freedom sea kind of thematic um, feeling and I think that was just really that to sort of try and trying to get the the, the feeling of move, freedom and movement and and that's something which is always been even in carnival it's always been there sort of you know we used to do capoeira when i was younger and and um then being around dancers really all of my life working with ijc carnival it's all physical movement and, and expression um and that started to come through really strongly you know i can notice that you know almost all the pieces it, there's only a few which don't have an element of death, have a strong element of movement. So really kind of the next bit was really look studies. I did a lot of studies, um, you know, I still do. And, you know, like this, I'm kind of just really trying to study and, and capture um, flow and movement. Um, and, and obviously these ones behind, it's kind of like, how do you you know how do you capture something which is constantly in motion um so i spent the next maybe month two months just kind of looking at different techniques whether it was using water watercolors inks sketching painting drip drawing um ha just different ways just to see how you know what what worked what did you get the the what could you feel that essence because it's not about kind of you know this is this it's just kind of you know what's the essence of this dance piece or what's the feeling behind it um and trying to capture that maybe in a sort of reduced way you know starting with quite a literal sketch you know things like this where it's you know it's a literal, it's a literal movement um and then transforming it into something more uh where you're just trying to just uses the minimum amount of uh, strokes to create uh, to, to, so you you can you know the movements there um, but you're not literally putting in every line and every everything you're kind of you know doing that in the balance of like color and shape uh, so that's been a big big um, influence and then I moved on to 
really like collage. I used to love collage when I was younger. I was always cutting up magazines and sketching and having palace magazines and, you know, trying to be kind of eco thinking, you know, it'd be good to turn, take carnival magazines, like tons of like Caribbean beat carnival magazines from going back and forwards for years. And uh, so at that time, actually, I just found out that Tony Hall, um, who is an incredible uh, Trinidadian uh, playwright, scholar, you know, mass man, everything, uh, academic, just incredible man. And he had just passed away. Uh, and so the next piece that I did was really a sort of tribute, I would say, to, to, to his work, the Juve process. Um, and it was really that idea of like dance and fight. And that's one of the sort of, that's like a phrase synonymous with Tony Hall is like dance and fight. And I really kind of really, when I read read a lot of his work, that phrase was always, I was kind of like, yeah, it's kind of like, you know, that's, that's really in everything we do. Everything's a bit of a dance in a fight. It's, it's sort of, and you've got to kind of find the harmony between the two. Carnival is dance and fight. He, that's like the essence of what, as you know, what we're doing as human beings. We're like either dancing or we're fighting or some trying to find something in between. So dance and fight was really a piece which was made from old. All of the pieces, all of the the elements of dance and fight is originally from carnival magazines. So everything in there is like something which has a reference point, but it's been cut and chopped and painted over, drawn over to, to thing. So it's a collage fundamentally with overdrawn collage. Um, and it's just, I don't know, it's, I, I really like that piece. Um, and all the way through, you know, I was really trying to sort of uh, sum that up in an, Im in an image visually, trying to sum up dance and fight. You know, how, what would it look like? How, do, how does that phrase, what does it look like? Um, so that set off a whole set of, you know, that, that's, there was a whole series of collages that came from dance and fight. And looking at different characters and it was just really good fun it was really really enjoyable and i'd just sit down in the mornings take a pile of magazines and print stick and chop and and put and draw and um so that series is it's kind of like yeah it's a series of of like there's you know uh, blue devil uh, breathing fire and there's um just a kind of characters a sailor in there and a mokujumbi and there's a dying swan which was minchel's queer queen um and yeah, it was just, it was playful. It was really playful, that one. Um, and in between, in the mornings, um, I would always have, uh, I would, every morning I would do like a sketch a day type of thing. So um, in between the bigger pieces, which was more in the workshop, I was always, you know, working on little ideas and little sketches and um, all kinds, any random, ran anything random things so um so that sort of punctuated the sort of bigger the bigger pieces of work so now i'm just going to talk a little bit about um portugal so in july 2021 um we moved to portugal we left leeds and we came to portugal um and so yeah it's, it's been kind of interesting to see it's been a, a lot of work we got the visas we got here um, got it's it's amazing. Portugal is just such a beautiful, amazing country. It's really lovely, and it's again, it's just a different time and and different sort of elements of of work coming through. Uh, so yeah, so this is some of the stuff I've been working on here in Portugal. Um, again, very much sense of movement, freedom, and um, expression, and. Uh, and colour, which has been really nice, sort of working with a new palette of colours and um, I've started to go to Capoeira again, which has been really amazing, doing a lot of movement sketches, really lovely group that I'm uh, part of there, Capoeira Al Gal. Um, and yeah, so it's a new chapter, see what this brings, you know, I've been kind of just trying to document uh, again, there's elements that are kind of, you know, more personal, you know, some of its reference points, you know, this is like a reference to, to um, a physical place here, but it's also a phys physical but really spiritual place. This is where you know, I go really sort of um, early with the dog. And uh, we go down to Pegasus. And uh, 
yeah, it's, it's a really magical spiritual place, um, this place. So it was really nice to, to try to capture the elements of that. Um, yeah, and again, you know, the elements with the sea and, you know, this was kind of really a uh, Yumea kind of feeling here with, I live really close to the sea, so, and water, so we have the ability to be able, I have the ability to be able to go um, and, and cleanse almost kind of, you know, as you need it, you've got rivers, we've got waterfalls, we've got the sea. Um, and that feeling of kind of uh, that power of, of water, I'm Pisces, so for me it's, it's like the ultimate freedom. So this was a piece that I painted, I think it's really that feeling of coming out, you know, and my kids are older now and, you know, we're in a different phase, we're in a new chapter. So it's, you know, it's, uh, I think that's something there, the ability to to get that, capture that, try to capture that feeling. Um, I feel really blessed, I feel really grateful. Um, you know, we, we're really, really, really lucky to be able to be here. And I've got a little studio out on the balcony here and we've got a view, incredible view of the city. So, you know, the city, town maybe. Uh, so yeah, so it's it's a new chapter and it's exciting, it's new and you know, it's, it's creative, Tavira's, we're in Tavira, it's a really creative little town, lots of um, different artists and um, yeah, so that's really in a nutshell. <laughs> uh, it's just, it's incredible, it's a gift, it's a real gift and um, and I feel really blessed and lucky that I've had the opportunity to have to, to have various careers in the arts and, uh, and you know, this is the new one, so <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah.